What is up, dudes and dudettes? It is finally time to get back into some more coding. I know, I didn't even take much of a break, but we're gonna get some more. And this is gonna be not your typical use to go thing because I found a pretty cool problem on HackRank one of my friends showed me, and I think that it would be interesting if we went through it together. Lucky for you, you go boys, I'm going full CS. No, I'm kidding, I'll do the other stuff, but I'm focusing on CS probably in college, so I should probably focus on that more now. I'm a junior, the no more Olympiad for me, basically. Hello, everybody, I'm Karar, and today we are going to be working through this uh, hacker rank problem. I've already solved it, but like, it was a really cool problem and a really cool application of recursion, so let us do it together. And also, I'm going to do it in Python, so if you guys have been waiting for a Python tutorial, here you guys go. And I might even talk about a little Vim because I'll do all the editing in Vim, so that'll be fun. Alright, so the Kingdom of Zion has cities connected by bi-directional roads. There is a unique path between any pair of cities. Morpheus has found out what the machines are planning to destroy the whole kingdom. If two machines can join forces, they will attack. Neo has to destroy the road connecting the cities with machines in order to stop them from joining forces. And basically each of the road takes some amount of time to destroy, and you basically want to find the minimum amount of time to stop the attack. Dude, hack rank's so nice, dude. Unlike Yuzuko, they don't number it 1 to n. They do 0 to n minus 1 just to be nice to us. So, so cool. But anyways, as you can see from the sample, right, if you want to minimize the amount of road you have to delete in order to disconnect the enemies, you just gotta take out this road, this road, and now the enemies cannot connect to each other. So generally when you see a tree, right, the like straightforward approach is to think recursion because it's either going to be some traversal of the tree and the easiest one in my opinion is recursion because then you could like return stuff, you could pass things down, it's, it's pretty cool. Recursion is generally a good solution to think of when you're dealing with trees. Also another thing you should always try when you deal with tree problems is you should always try rooting the tree. And basically what that means is taking a top point which you usually put at zero and then you droop everything else down from that. So we go one here, two, three, and then this guy's a four. And then these two guys are red over here. Let's mark that. We'll blammo, we'll blammo, and we'll blammo. So whenever you're trying to think of a recursion solution, right, the strategy is you want to look at like a subtree of the bigger tree. So why is it we're trying to solve the problem just for this tree? Then we know that like if we have these two edges, we want to delete the minimum one of those two edges, and then these two will get disconnected. But what happens if like the subtree kind of look like like that? We got a three, and then there's a five down there, and then the five is red. Well, if you did this right, you can't just say like it's either this edge or this edge that we want to delete. We had to decide between between three edges, right? And what happens if it was even longer? Then four edges, five edges, it could be infinity edges. However. Like, we could delete anything, any one of these three edges, in order to disconnect them. Like, any of them. It doesn't matter which one, we just need to delete one of these three edges in order to disconnect them. So we know that in a recursive thing, right, each node passes something up when it's done, right? Like, the method gets called here, and then it calls this method, which calls this method, and then this method returns something back up here. Same thing over here, right? This returns something, this returns something. But what happens if each node returns the minimum edge that we could delete in order to disconnect it from this node over here. So let's say like this is 4, this is 5, and this is like 6. Now the minimum edge to disconnect this node from this node is 6, clearly, because that's the only edge you could do. Now there's no reason why we have to disconnect this node from this node because they're both healthy, happy cities, no robots to deal with, so we don't have to worry about those two. So basically, the only information we want to care about is how we disconnect this node from this node because that's the only edge that we could take out between these two guys but then this guy would be like either we could take out this edge or we could take out this edge so it takes the minimum of these two edges and it says wait we could just delete this one and it's much more efficient than deleting this one because that one's longer and it doesn't help us at all to delete that so this guy over here will pass up four and now in order to disconnect it we only had to compare this number with this number we don't have to compare like infinite numbers we only had to compare the one passed up by this one and the one passed up by this and clearly 4 is the best edge to delete. So we erase this edge and hooray, these two guys are disconnected. We did it. But wait, there's more. So now this guy got to pass up something and we know that like this 3 doesn't matter because it's a happy village so we don't care about disconnecting this edge. This edge doesn't do anything. It disconnects two happy cities. No reason to disconnect it. There's no more red things over here, so we don't have to worry about this edge. So the only edge that's relevant is this edge and this edge, right? Because in order to disconnect this one from this node, we only had to delete one of these two edges. So which one is smaller? Let's say this is 3. Then this one node will pass up 3 over here. And then let's say this one is like 6, then this one would pass up a 6. And now we know that if we want to disconnect this node from the closest red node on its left, 
we know that we just had to take out a like a three but if we want to disconnect this from the one on its right then we had to take out a whole six and there's no reason to take out the six because if we disconnect this node from this node then this node is automatically disconnected from this node. so basically at every node you want to take the minimum of the things that are going into it and then that's the edge you delete so in this case we'll delete this one and right now all of our three guys are disconnected we're all happy so you get the gist of it, right? You're basically trying to pass up something to help you choose which edge to delete without having to compare all of the edges you've seen before. Right now, we only had to compare two edges at a time, so it's really, really cool. So let's like flesh this idea out a little bit more, right? So for any node, right? There's gonna be a bunch of nodes coming into it. Some of them are gonna not have any red stuff associated with them. Some of them are going to be red nodes. And then some of them, are going to be like a bunch of black nodes attached to a red node at the bottom. Now really, we do not care about any of these black nodes. As long as there's a red node, we want to disconnect it from the main one, right? Because if any two are attached to the main node, they could go to the main node and then go down to find the other guys. So in order for all these three guys to be disconnected, only one of them is allowed to attach to this guy. Because if there's two, they could both go to the main node and meet up. So essentially, we got to delete two of the three in order for this to work. So the black node over here is going to pass up the number that represents the smallest edge among all these edges that we could delete to disconnect this guy. This guy is going to pass up this edge because that's how much it costs to disconnect this guy. And then this guy is going to pass up this edge, that's how much it costs to disconnect that guy. And we want to disconnect two of the three, so we want to take the cheapest two of the three because we want to minimize how much time we spend. So you basically get three numbers, you take the min two of them, and let's say that, that min two is this guy and like some random edge in here. So hooray, all three of these guys are disconnected and now this guy is still problematic because it's still connected to this one and he's going to get passed up as we go up our tree. So this guy is going to pass up the minimum of this edge or this edge because we could delete either of them to break this whole chunk off from the rest of the tree. Now the last case to consider is what happens if this guy is red? Then none of these guys could be connected to this guy, right? Because if they're connected to this guy, then like they're going to be connected to another robot and then we're doomed. We don't want an apocalypse on our hands. So essentially what we do is we have to delete all the edges that we get. So we delete this guy too. And then the only edge that's going to be passed up by this guy, because he's at the very top and we want to disconnect him from the rest of the tree, he's going to pass up the length of this edge. So let's put it up in Python just to make this clear. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to git bash, very cool. Then we're going to cd in into our documents folder. And if we want to see where we want to go, we just type ls, woblamo, we open up all this stuff. And then we see, oh, look, test projects. Why don't we go in there? So we go cd test project and then we ls again that's the only thing we got our is prime from last time and if we want to create a new thing all you got to do is vim and then we'll call it like matrix.pot now if we look at how hackerank structured this thing basically it gives us a function and wait let's convert this to python python 3 very cool it basically asks us to implement the function given roads and machines as lists so we're going to do the same thing here def min time road comma machine and then like that and basically if you want to type in vim like you might try to type and nothing's happening all you got to do is type i and that puts you in an insert mode and then you can type so why don't we first figure out what our n and our m is so n is just the number of roads so it's going to be n roads plus one well it's one more than the number of roads because it's a tree and then the number of m is equal to len machine okay so in order to root our tree we're going to have to dfs through it from the top node so we could see how everything falls down from there specifically if we have like a random tree right we got zero we got one we got two we got three we got four if we want to find out how it's rooted we had to start at zero put it at the top we DFS to 1, and we're like, okay, so 1 goes this way, and then we go down to 2, down to 3, and we're say 3 points to 2, 2 points to uh, 0, and then we go down to 4, and then that points to 2. And that's what we want to find out, because we want to pass things up, right? So in order to know which way to pass things up, you got to have this kind of structure. So in order to go to the beginning of the file, we do escape gg, and then we type i, and we start again, def dfs, and then we'll have our current node. Well, let's enter this just to be less annoying. And then Shift A puts you at the end of the line in insert mode. So we want to pass in our current node and our parent node. And we want to pass in also the parent array that we want to fill out. And we also want to pass in rows. Okay, so why don't we make in min time our parent array. And we basically get us to do that parent is equal to this or zero times n. And then we'll just pass in rows. We could parse rows here too. So 
We don't like the way that Rhodes is passed in. Rhodes is basically passed in as a list in this format. And these three letter things don't do anything for us. So we want to put it in an adjacency list, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to parse it into add and we're going to make add into a bunch of empty lists. So the way you do that, this for i in range m or m. Yeah, okay. And then we're going to parse it with a for loop. So road and road are add road zero. It's going to be a tuple with the endpoint of our path and the length of the path. So the endpoint is going to be road one and the length is road two. And then similarly, it's bidirectional, so we got to go the other way. Add road one is equal to road zero comma road two. Okay, and then we want to run our DFS from the zeroth node, so we do DFS zero. It does not have a parent because it's the root of the tree. Then we pass in parent, and then we pass in add as our root. Okay, now we type gg to go to the top of the file, uh, shift a to go to the end, enter, and then now we got to program this nonsense. So essentially, once we run this, we want to set parent car to equal parent. Okay, and then now we want to loop through all its children and like DFS on those. So we go for int or for i in road car, and we want to make sure that we're not going back up the tree, otherwise, we go infinitely. We go down, we go back up, we don't want that. So we got to do if i is well, i is basically going to be a tuple of your endpoint and length. So if i0, which is the endpoint, is not equal to parent, then we are safe to BFS on it or DFS on it. So we do DFS i0 comma, but also we want to store in our parent, we want to store how far away our parent is from ourselves because we're going to use that right in what we pass up. So we're going to return the entire tuple because we also want to keep the length intact. And then we pass up parent and pass in row. Okay, epic. So now what this should do is it should make all our parent array and make it work fine. Okay. Now we want to go to the end of the file, we type capital G, and then if we want to start typing, we could just do I, tab, and let's do it. So now that we know our parents, we want to do our like recursive algorithm. So in order to do that, we're going to have to define another function. So we'll actually click escape, go up over here, shift A, enter, go back to the beginning, and depth. And we're going to call it min time helper because this is going to be basically a recursive helper in order to help us run this function. So we got to know our current. So we got to know where we are. We got to know where we have roads and we got to know where we have machines. And we can add stuff as necessary, but I think that should be it for now. And also at the very top of the file, we want to do GG and we want to add in a global tot variable. Now I know like global variables is not the best, but we want to keep track of how much we or how much, um, how many edges we've destroyed, like how much time it's taking right now. So then we'll go back down to min time helper, we'll start coding it up. So remember, there are two cases, right? Either our current node is not a machine, in which case we have to delete all of the below ones, except one of them, or we're red and we have to delete everything underneath. So the only thing we care about then is the sum of the edges and the max edge. So if you think about it, if you want to delete like all but one of the edges in the smallest way possible, you basically take the sum and you subtract the maximum one. Because the maximum one is the most costly, we do not want to use that one. So we only have to keep track of s is equal to zero and max is equal to, or we can call it ma is equal to zero. And then we got to loop through its adjacent stuff. i in roads car. And once again, we got to check that this is not a parent, so we don't want to go back up. And basically, once we call min time helper, the, there's two things we got to pass up, right? whether or not the thing we're passing up is associated with a red thing and like the shortest ed we could delete, right? Because we literally do not care about these guys. So we want to ignore them. So they, these guys should pass up, hey, ignore me. And then these guys should be like, hey, pay attention to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to have two things that it returns. We're first going to return is red and we're also going to return left. And then we'll basically call min time helper on all of its subordinates. So if it's red, then it contributes to our s, so s plus equals length, and it also contributes to our max. So ma is equal to max ma comma length. Otherwise, we literally just ignore it. Okay, so now there's like two options, right? If our we are ourselves are red, if machine car, oh wait, huh? It gives us machines in this format. So we should probably convert this to a boolean array so it's easier for us to manage. So let's do that. Escape J, 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 J. Where should we put it? We'll put it over here with parent, shift A, and then do this. Um, we could do like machine is equal to false times n. And then we go to the end of the file, 
And basically what we want to do is we want to loop through machine. So for machine or for m in machine, we're gonna set machine m is equal to true. Okay, so now like our machine is gonna be a Boolean array, so right here we could basically say if machine car, then we want to delete all the edges below it because it's red and we can't have anything connected to it. We gotta do top plus equals sum. And in order to access top, we gotta to make it a global variable, so we go up here and we say global top. Okay, and then the only edge that this could pass up possibly is going to be its parent. So we're gonna uh, go min time helper, or no, sorry, we're gonna return true because this one's red, right? So we're gonna have to return true. But we're also gonna have to return the length of the edge that's coming out of it. So that's gonna just be parent car one. Okay, however, if it's not a machine, right, then we have to be careful because what happens if we don't have any red things coming into it? then what we pass up has to be false, but if we do have a machine, then we have to pass up the biggest edge that's going up. So first thing we gotta do is we gotta do taunt plus equals sum minus ma, or s minus ma, whoops, let me change that up here. And then we gotta return our, either we gotta return the maximum edge that's below, right, because if we look at this, we either return this guy, which is the biggest edge that we didn't delete, or this guy. Whoops, that's not what I went, meant to circle. Or this guy. So the minimum of those two. Uh, we'll figure out the boolean later, but we want to return min of ma com uh, parent car zero. And in order to find whether this is true or not, we basically had to keep track of whether we have any children that are red. And we're going to do that by going to the top of the function, escape kkkk. Okay, that got weird. <laughs> and then we basically says has red. And we'll set that to false originally. Or we'll, set, we'll, we'll uh, see. Yeah, we can set it originally false. Okay. And then we'll go down here. And then over here, we want to set has red equals true. Because is red is true, which means that one of our children was red. So we got to set it to true. And then at the very end, we'll basically just go over here and we will set this to has red. All right, epic. Oh, well, we never even passed in parent here. So we're going to fix that. Okay. So let's see. This would be my uh, parent and then. Oh, we could just call it parent, why not? So we want to delete the S, we just click X, and then we're good. And then we could just pass in parent over here at the top. Wait, what is parent even? Oh, okay, I think this is not going to work. So we had to do parent, uh, parent car zero. Okay. Oh, what's this should be parent car one? What am I doing? So we do a dollar to go to the end. We go back one, click X, I want. Okay, now let's try copying and pasting this into half rank, see if it works. And we delete this stuff. Okay, let's try it. Run code. Probably not gonna work. Whoops. Which file, uh, which line? Uh, 12. DFS. I0. What's line 12? Uh, not equal to parent. Oh, whoops, we had to do parent 0. Oh, 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 I should append. Oh, we had to do dot append. Okay, okay. Whoops. You know, why don't we just do it in here? Okay, we have finished our Vim tutorial. Let's do this. So dot append and this. And the same thing over here. And then we gotta run our machine mini min time helper from zero. And then we just uh, return top. Oh whoops, over here. Oops, this is supposed to be negative one, comma, negative one, or zero, zero. Because the length to its parent is zero. Okay, that makes so much more sense. Okay. And we forgot one argument in machines. Oh yeah, here. Okay, so we gotta pass in parent. Okay. And this over here should be i0. God dang it. Okay. Holy moly, I'm making too many mistakes. Wait, what? Hold up. So this is a machine. Oops. Did I make everything machines? Okay, there we go. Okay. There we go. Basically, this test case was troll because it's like it added in the solution to the test case. So nobody ever solved it because the max score over here is 70. And just don't put that test case, I guess. But epic, we did it. Let's go. So basically, that was just a cool example of recursion that you could do with Python. It's really cool because you pass, you like could pass up multiple things in Python, and it's really cool. So I hope that was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. Once again, thank you guys for watching, and see you guys next time.